Hello everyone, welcome to Geed's Games, and today I'm going to show you how to do a character selection screen in Unity. And this is what it's going to look like when it's all done. So you can go next, change your characters, or you can go back. This is a project I'm working on and thought it would be a cool and useful tutorial. So let's get started. All right, so first thing we're going to do is open up a new scene. Then I'm going to go to the top left and go to main camera. I'm going to change projection from perspective to orthographic. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to make a new folder for all my characters. I'm going to use four sprites from this app I'm developing. You can use any sprites you like, and you can use more than four or less than four. The logic I'm going to show you today will work for any amount of characters. So I'm going to go ahead and add these characters into the scene. I'm going to rename them just to make it a little easier. Just a little hint, F2 helps uh, change the name of the, of the game object quickly if you didn't know that. So now I'm gonna put the character in the middle. I'm gonna hide these guys off screen. We will need them later. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is right click, go to UI, and create a button. It's gonna create this canvas. Any UI object has to be in a canvas to show up. So I'm gonna change the Canvas Scaler, the UI scale mode from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. What that does is no matter what uh, what uh, what aspect ratio, the button will always stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that where I want it to be. And as you can see, if I change the aspect ratio, the button stays in the same place relative to the sprite. Alright, so I'm going to move this one to the right side and I'm going to change the text to next character and then I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this button, control D and rename this next character, previous character, and I'm going to go ahead and move this button to the left. All right. I'm going to change the text to previous character. good. Alright, so I'm going to create a new game object. I'm going to name it Selector Manager. And we're going to go ahead and get ready to start creating our script. I'm going to go to Add Component and I'm going to name this Selector Script. Hit Enter. Enter again. And now we have our script. So I'm going to right click this once it loads, go to Edit Script, and drag this over so you can see once it loads. Alright, so I'm going to get rid of Start and Update, you're not going to need that. I'm going to create a public game object for each of my sprites. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, make it quicker. Great. Alright, and then I'm going to make a new vector 3. This is going to be the position where it sits, the character sits in the middle of the screen, and then I'm going to need another one for off screen. So character position and copy paste 
this, and just name this one off screen. All right, so now I'm going to save this, go back into Unity, and make sure we have our selector manager selected. And now we notice that these fields show up. That's because it's public. Um, sometimes you need to serialize the field, but I've been noticing that when you do public fields, that shows up too. So I'm going to go to my characters, and what this is, this is basically linking the character to the game object. So I'm just drag it, match up the names. And all right, and then I'm going to save that and go back into my script. So now we're going to make a an awake function. So basically an awake function is what runs before you see the game. So when you press play, it does the awake function, then it does the start function, and then it does the update function. So this is going to be at the very, very beginning. And what we're going to do is we're going to get that position of our of this character, the sprite. So this is where every character is going to be at when we do next and previous character. So right now we're just saving that position. So I'm going to go ahead and do character position. Dot, oops, I can just do equals, and then the the sprite I'm using is lemon, and dot, the, or dot transform dot position. So that right there saves the the starting position to that variable, and then we're gonna do that again with the the characters off screen. So these guys right over here, but we only need to use one. So let me go back in and do off screen and set that equal to one of the guys off screen equava dot transform dot position alright looking good and now I am going to make a function for the next character button and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for previous character. Alright, so now we're going to go to our next character function and we are going to create a switch statement and this is what we're going to use to switch between our characters. So just get this ready. I have four characters, so I'm going to do this four times. And then it's always nice to have a default case in your switch statement in case something freaky happens and breaks. So this is yelling at us right now. We need a variable to actually test this. So what I'm going to do is go up here and create an integer and just name this character int and set that to 1. Alright, and then I'll copy this in here because that is what we're going to need. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this and just paste it down here because a lot of it is the same logic. Alright, so one thing I forgot to do is make some sprite renderer variables. So basically these are out of sight, but we can disable the sprite renderer to save on performance and they're going to be going back and forth, so we're going to need that. And this is the sprite render component I'm talking about. So I'm going to go back into my script and start making that. Private sprite render, do lemon render, banana render, lava render, and grape render. And what I'm going to do is put this in the awake function. Basically, this is just getting this component and it does it once at, at when it starts the, the app or the program. So if you did it in this function, it would keep getting that component every time you click that button. And over a course of a play session, that would really impact your performance. So this is a way to help that and help optimize your game. So we're going to set our sprite renderer to 
our sprite. Basically, what this is just linking, it so it knows what it is. Now we're going to start filling in our switch statement. So as you can see, the very first character is Lemon. So I'm going to go in and we set character into 1. So when you first hit this button, it's going to go through, read this, see what this is 1, go to this case, and our first character displaying is the Lemon. So I want to disable that, so we're going to disable the sprite render, so it's going to be lemon.enable equals false. So this basically turns this sprite and just disables it. Oops, it would be this lemon one, and disables it. So that's the first step. So after we do that, then we are going to want to move it out of sight. So we get the lemon game object, and uh, position .transform position, and we are going to want to set that to the off-screen position that we set earlier. So basically what that's going to do is going to disable this and then move it all the way over here. All right. And then what we want after that is our next character to appear. So how we do that is we take our next character, let's say banana, and uh, transform uh, position. And we want to move that to the character position that we saved. All right. And then the final step would be to enable this uh, sprite render so we can see it. All right. And let's go ahead and test that. Oops. We have to link it. Got to link that real quick. So what we do is go to our next character button, and right here on click, we're going to hit that plus, and then we drag our selector manager in. It has the script we want, the selector script, and then we just go down and find that function. All right, so let's save that, and now we can press play and test it. So now we hit next character and the banana appears. There's no other logic, so we got to fill that in. But at least we know this is working, so that's good. All right, and the very next thing we're going to want to do is take this integer right here and do character int plus plus. So basically, after we click this button, it's going to increase, increment this by one. So then it will, next time we hit the button, it will go to our case number two and so on and so on and then eventually we're going to need to create a like a reset function and we can get there we can do it when we get there so basically this is the same functionality so you can just copy and paste and then we just got to refill it in so now once we hit case one the lemon goes away and now it's the banana so now when we hit case two we're going to need the banana to go away and then insert another character so we can just copy and paste this, banana render to that one, banana to that one, and now add our new character. Box render, and we can do that for the remaining ones. All right, and the next one would be great. Right back to our lemon. Save that and then we'll test this real quick. Just make sure it works.
All right. And then as you see, it doesn't reset. So that's where the reset function comes in. You can only do it so many times, or one time. So now we are going to create a reset function. Private void reset integer. All right, and I'm just going to do an if statement. So basically, if this integer is greater than or equal to 4, I'm just going to set this back to 1 because that's what it is right now. And then I'm going to take this function, I'm going to call it in default. So that's basically if something wacky happens, it's going to reset and go back to 1. And then I'm also going to call it after my very last case. So let's go ahead and try this out and make sure this works. It should just let me continuously change the characters and it does so we're good and now we just have to work on the previous character. So we're going to go back and let's get ready to do that. Alright so now we're going to work on the previous character function. What I'm going to do is copy and paste this logic and paste that in case 4 and instead of the plus plus I'm going to go minus minus so this de-increments de it because we're going to go backwards now so when we're at case 4 we would turn off we would be at the grape and we turn off the grape and go back to the lemon which would be our first one but we're going backwards now so we're going to turn off the grape and go to our guava because that is the third one Alright, and then we can just paste, copy and paste that in here. And then we are going to go from our guava back to our banana. And then we are going to go from our banana back to the lemon. And then we are going to go from the lemon, because that was our first one, back to our grape. Alright. And we're going to need some extra logic right here to go the other way. But I'm just going to make sure it works for now and show you guys. So we can go to our next character and it's good. And oops. Oh, we forgot to link it. All right. So we're going to go to our previous character button and do the same thing. Go to plus and drag our selector mandarin. Go to our selector script and this time go to previous character. Save that. Press play. And it goes forward. And now it goes backwards, but then it stops and then we get some weird weird functionality. So that's where we need to reset it the other way. So basically going forward, if it reaches over four, we want to set it back to one. And any other time, we are gonna to want to set this to four. So we can go down. And then we are going to do our reset function up here in case one instead of case four. And also in our default in case it breaks. Alright, and that should fix that. Let's press play and make sure everything's good. Alright, this still works. And now we can go backwards. So we got lemon, grape, guava, banana, lemon. Yep, we are good to go. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave some comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll be having more Unity tutorials coming to you guys shortly.